So Dill is um, fascinated by the Radley place and this is connected a little bit to his love of Dracula. He wants, he loves mystery, he loves horror, he loves the supernatural. Um, but he, at the same time, he's super scared. He uh, will not stand even close to the, uh, to, even though he's fascinated by the house, he won't stand close to it. He keeps a safe distance from it. Um, and then we have a description of this really kind of haunted house in a way. It's all rotted and it's all grey and it's not looked after. The, the yard isn't swept. The grass grows very high. Um, and then we have um, uh, the statement inside the house lived a malevolent phantom. Um, the narrator speaks to us in many voices. We have the voice of her, the older narrator. We have the voice of the younger narrator. And we also have the voice of the author every now and then. Um, and here we have the voice of the younger narrator because obviously there wasn't a malevolent phantom in the house. Um, we are talking about the superstitions and the beliefs of, of what was going on there. And especially when we have it all interpreted through the, through the eyes and ears of a very young character such as Scout. OK, um, basically, uh, nobody had ever seen him um, and people, uh, there were all sorts of rumours that he only went out at night. And if anything goes wrong in the town, it's got to be the evil doings of this, uh, this Radley character. If the, the flowers freeze, um, if it's all of a sudden cold and the flowers freeze, it's got to be because of him. Any crimes that happen, it was because of him. Um, uh, it says the Negroes wouldn't even pass by. They would cut through another way in order not to walk by the house. People, it was the uh, superstition and the fear of the this Radley house and the family inside it is so bad that they won't even eat the delicious pecans from the tree because they, that from the tree that grows in the garden of the Radleys because they say it's poisoned. Um, so basically, um, now we're going to have the story of very, very unfortunate events that happened in the Radley house. Um, and uh, we have, uh, they the started going on before Jim um, and the narrator were born. Um, the Radleys were a family that were outcasts. They didn't fit in to the society make them and they weren't interested in fitting in, okay? They didn't go to church, which was a big no-no. Everybody goes to church in this town. Um, and Mrs. Radley wasn't sociable with her neighbours. And Mr. Radley would walk out, walk to town 11.30 every morning, come back at 12, sometimes carrying a brown paper bag. We don't know what was in the bag. They don't know what Mr. Radley does for a living. Um... Jem says he bought cotton, which apparently is a phrase which means he doesn't do anything at all. And uh, they had been living there as long as anybody could remember in this house. The shutters and the doors of the Radley house were closed on Sundays. Normally on Sundays, um, people went to each other's houses. It was a day of being sociable. But for this family, Sundays is a day where they keep inside. Um, and uh, nobody ever went to visit the Radleys, and the Radleys didn't go and visit anyone else. Um, now, we have a neighbourhood legend. We have a story that goes round the neighbourhood about what happened to when the Radley boy was young, when he was a teenager. Apparently, he hung around with a group, like a gang of teenagers, uh, who just made a bit of trouble, the kind of regular stuff that teenagers do, they hung around, they went to the picture show, they went to dances, they did a bit of gambling, they maybe drunk a bit, they're with the homemade alcohol. Um, and uh, yet nobody could say to Mr. Radley, hey, your boy's getting into trouble because nobody would speak to Mr. Radley. And then uh, one night... One night, the, the uh, boys, um, they kind of uh, sort of hijack a cheap car 
they um, they resist arrest by Maycomb's sort of policeman, person who keeps the peace, Mr. Connor. And not only do they resist arrest, they actually go and lock him in the courthouse outhouse. And at this point, everyone in the town says, enough is enough. We can't have these boys behaving like this. Um, and they went, the boys went before a judge. Uh, they had all sorts of charges against them, um, including something really ridiculous, which was using abusive and profane language in the presence and hearing of a female. In the 30s, it was actually prohibited to swear in front of a woman. But the boys did not swear in front of a woman. They were just swearing loudly. And uh, the prosecutor said, well, a woman could have heard it. So that was their excuse. Um, so uh, they, are, they are actually uh, given the punishment of going to state industrial school, which is a type of educational establishment for uh, kids who who sort of are not doing what they're supposed to be doing in life uh, ironically it wasn't actually a bad thing this school provided kids with quite a good education um, but for Mr Radley this was super super embarrassing to have this punishment for his son and he actually did a deal with the judge that he was going to make sure that Arthur never gave any more trouble again and because everybody knows each other and the judge knows that Mr. Radley's word is his bond, he does it. Um, so the boys, meantime, go off and they move on, get a good education. They end up getting good jobs and they're fine. Uh, but this boy went into the Radley's house and he was not seen by anyone for 15 years. Um, and uh, there was a day... Uh, when Jem was very young, where Boo Radley was heard from and seen by several people. Um, and this was another very unpleasant incident. We don't know for sure what happened. But one of the stories said that um, this um, Boo Radley, who's already now a, a young man, um, actually he was 33, he was old, you know, a little bit older than that, sitting, cutting up uh, pieces of newspaper and putting them into a scrapbook, his father enters the room, passes him by, and he stabs his father in the leg, and calmly, according to the story, continues cutting afterwards. Mrs. Radley runs out of the house screaming, saying that Arthur's killing them. The sheriff um, comes and takes Boo, um, and, um, and, th and there's all sorts of discussions about what is going on with this person. They want to put him into a lunatic asylum, a place for mad people. Um, but uh, the Mr. Radley did not want that to happen. Um, and uh, he insisted that Boo not be charged with anything. And uh, so he was locked in the courthouse basement. What is very interesting is that the sheriff will not put him in the jail with Negroes. This is our first um, hint that... Um, we have two different peoples here who are completely separate, uh, almost two different classes. You, Even if somebody is crazy and he's a criminal, I mean, Boo Radley did something pretty bad, you don't put a white person in jail with black people because black people, whatever they've done is, according to what people think, is far worse. Um, and uh, Boo was there for quite a bit. Um, and then in the end... Um, Mr. Radley takes him back. Um, we don't know what went on, um, but there's something quite um, pertinent, something quite um, uh, good analysis here, is that uh, um, nobody knew what form of Mr. Radley employed to keep Boo out of sight. Okay, But Jem figured that Mr. Radley kept him chained to the bed most of the time. Atticus said, no, it wasn't that sort of thing. There were other ways of making people into ghosts. Um, basically, Boo Radley has made a transition from becoming a person to somebody who's a non-person. Okay, um, And so here, the word ghost can have two meanings. You can have a ghost, which is um, somebody who is scary, who goes around and haunting everybody, or a ghost is just somebody who, who's not real, who doesn't exist. 
Um, so uh, uh, now we have um, Scout remembering Mrs. Rabby sometimes coming out and pouring water on her flowers. Um, and uh, they would see Mr. Radley coming to and from town. Um, he's a, a religious person, according to Miss Stephanie. Uh, he was so upright, he took the Lord of God, the word of God as his only law. And we believed her because Mr. Radley's posture was ramrod straight, that he was, he walked straight and he took the word of God, whatever that means, as it was. Never spoke to anybody. Um, and uh, they say from the day Mr. Radley took Arthur home, people said the house died. Um and uh, then uh, we get to the next stage, which is when Mrs. Radley is dying. Um, there's a lot of commotion outside the house. Again, the narrator is standing on the outside. She doesn't know what's going on the inside, and neither does Jem. Um, and uh, then... Um... Oh, sorry, did I say Mrs. Radley? I meant Mr. Radley. So Mr. Radley is dying, and uh, Calpurnia whispers something about him says there goes the meanest man ever god blew breath into um which is like she doesn't really say anything like that bad anything bad about white people and uh, so that's quite a pertinent remark um and uh they thought now maybe they would get to know um boo about boo radley but no boo radley's elder brother has come from pensacola and has taken the place of the father. And once again, Boo is shut inside. Um, and this is a... Uh, and uh, so Dill has heard all the stories about the Radleys and he's just getting more and more curious. Um, and he, he wants to know what, what Boo Radley does all day. Um, and uh, Jem says he goes out at night and Miss Stephanie Crawford once saw him staring at her like a skull. Uh, you know, very similar to Dracula in the movie. So, uh, so Dill wonders what Boo looks like. And uh, Jem gives a description that he's tall, that he eats raw squirrels and any cats he can catch and that his hands are bloodstained. Um, you know, all these stories about he's got a, a jagged scar across his face, his teeth are yellow and rotten, his eyes popped and he drools. Okay, so he really is not a human being in the children's eyes. He is a monster. Okay, so Dill has this idea. Let's make him come out. He wants to see what he looks like. And uh, uh, Jem says uh, if he wants to get himself killed, all he had to do was go and knock on the door. 